Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of Mining with Mora. I'm your host, Mora. In this video series, we'd like to introduce you to different ideas on how to increase productivity and safety and other cool trends in the industry like automation and predictability. My very first guest is Sean Chaney. Sean, welcome. Thanks, Maura. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be your first guest. Uh, Our guinea pig, per se. Yeah, but, you know, it's a beautiful day in Colorado. I'm glad you came here. So, Sean, let's talk about your article that was recently posted on, on the blog. Thanks for reading it. You're welcome. Very yes. well written, by the way. Okay, thank you. I'd like to start at the beginning okay. and give some background of traditionally what have mining companies looked for in their road retooling? I think traditionally the matrix or the, the KPI has been around cost per foot. Mm -hmm. Cost per foot's pretty straightforward, simple concept. If you look at everything in the drill string, uh, you know, and consider that you've got all these items that wear, mm -hmm. it's as simple as saying, what does this piece of it cost and how many feet does it last? So cost per foot's very valuable in terms of trying to understand what happens. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that cost per foot doesn't take into account is the penetration rate of mm -hmm the tooling and obviously that penetration rate, the overall productivity of this very expensive asset is important. Oh, that sounds like a very holistic approach and simple enough. Thanks for breaking that down. Sean, how is road retooling changing, especially with automation? There's a lot of consideration and time put into how automation is implemented into operations, but maybe there's not enough consideration of what else needs to be part of that mm -hmm. process. And that's where the concept of TDC really uh, becomes a more important mm -hmm. way to evaluate the effectiveness of your drill string and your tooling and the entire asset because TDC takes into account the penetration rate, the cost of the machine, operator, fuel, everything that it takes to essentially perform the work. You can be much more predictable in getting that target footage per day because an operator can leave the cab, take a break, and the drill can continue to work. So I think that's really the key, Moira. It's about how do we minimize disruptions to the drill. And automation is one way to do that. And then there might be things on the tooling side that can, we can improve on as well. Well, I'm so glad you pointed out the tooling because people don't think about the tooling as part, a key part in the automation of the drill. Yeah. And to keep, keep that production rolling is so important. Absolutely, absolutely. In the article, you mentioned this V-Lock system. Yes. Tell me more about that. V-Lock, it's kind of one of these widely think of a tuner type, mm -hmm. type products, a solution to a common problem. Mm -hmm. So as you know, Maura, when you traditionally attach here, a piece of okay. drill pipe to the top of the drill mm -hmm. string, to the shock sub, most companies are welding those two components together to make sure they're tight throughout the life of those components. The V-Lock is very simply two pieces that clamp together and okay. secure the various components of that top of the drill string. So with two pieces and a couple screws torqued to a proper nice. torque spec, you're done. The, the process is uh, very quick and easy, and it can be done by really anybody on the, on the mine site. Is there anything else to consider with extending that drill string life? One thing that we've had on the market for quite a while, but is not always used today, is what we call our team alloy product. Mm -hmm. you know team alloy? Team alloy, so it's just an alloy product versus a mild steel. So it's it's again very simple and straightforward. Alloy has better wear characteristics mm -hmm. than mild steel. So if it lasts longer, you have to touch it, change it less frequently. Gives you better wear life. Mm -hmm. It's rebuildable. So whether it's the drill steel or the deck bushings, you can take full advantage of that extra life of the material itself oh. by doing a simple rebuild. And it's very cost effective as well. Good. Everybody always wants to know what does the future hold. Yeah, that, that's a very important question. Mm -hmm. So we're testing a lot of different things right now, a lot of technologies in the field, uh, but the, the concept's simple. It's we want to be able to record the life and performance of each component of that drill string captured by the drill so that then you can analyze it, compare it to benchmarks, you know, across broad industries mm -hmm. and also within specific operations and really just identify things that look like they're underperforming mm -hmm. or, or are not meeting the expectation we had. It gives us a way to focus and improve and work with our customers to be better. It's very exciting. And, and it's good stuff, very exciting. Sean. Very good stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining Thank me you. today. Thank you, Maura. For Sean's full article, please visit miningandconstructionusa.com. And I hope you join me for my next episode of Mining with Maura. Hello, and welcome to the very welcome first... 
Sure. Oh my gosh. Okay. You're going to go. Film it and we can be doing the high fives afterward. And then you get into the math and blah, blah, blah. If you've got an asset that, um, mm -hmm. uh, well, we're going to have to splice that somehow. Answer that question. No, but what's your favorite carpool karaoke? Ah, uh, let's see. Have you seen it? Yes, and it's a riot. <laughs> Probably Adele. Did you see the one where they start wrestling around on the no. lawn? No. Mystic view. Well, especially mentioning pen and paper, and then you hop uh. in your Tesla and drive home. And it's, it's off. Oh, the, the camera's yeah. off.